Student Athlete Panel. It is our first one that I'm aware of, but we're going to take a minute. My name is Michelle Detweiler. I am the Student Athlete Development Coordinator for Athletics. Um, I'm a former Division III student athlete. I played basketball and I ran track at Eastern Nazarene College in Quincy, Massachusetts. Um, part of my why of being a Student Athlete Development Coordinator is that when I was a student athlete, we didn't have someone that could give us resources to leadership, career, um, wellness resources. So really being able to give back to other student athletes has been a big part of my why and why I value this work so much and how athletics has just been a really big part of my life. Um, we're going to go down the line of our panelists so they can introduce themselves real quick with their name, year, sport, and then just a quick why watch you. Um, hey, my name is Shabari Shafe. Um, I'm a sophomore on the men's basketball team from Chicago, Illinois. And for my why watch you, um, I said this when I first committed to watch you, but I think it's still probably my why. And it's just the school's standard of collaboration, standard of excellence, both academically and athletically, and really just the opportunity to play my sport at a high level, compete for national championships, while also earning a great education. Hi, my name is Abayomi Awayomi. I'm a junior on the track and field team from Brooklyn, New York City. I chose Wash U. Sorry. I chose Wash U because of um, how prestigious it is, specifically in the STEM field. I'm actually a chem major, and I plan on pursuing a career in chemistry, so I feel like this is a good stepping point for me. Hi, everyone. My name is Christina Walker. I'm a sophomore on the women's basketball team, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. My why wash you was really um, just because I felt like wash you had a good um, combination between athletics and academics, um, and also had like a really good psychology program. And I can attest that that's pretty much true, and I'm definitely happy to be here. Hi, my name is Kira Crumbly. I'm a freshman on the swim and dive team at Albany, Ohio. Um, and my why wash you is I just really liked how collaborative the environment was and the balance between academics and athletics. Hi, my name is Langston Larimore we're Josie. I'm a senior on the football team from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And my why wash you is really the people. Uh, when I took my overnight visit here as a senior in high school, I hung out with some of the guys on the team, some people that weren't on the team. It just felt like home. I remember before I left, I told my mom, this is where I wanted to be, but she made me go home and think about it first. But I knew it was where I wanted to be, and that's like, oh, truth from right here. Cool, thank you. Um, so for those of us not in athletics, we know that athletics is a busy schedule. It's very full, whether you play an individualized sport, team sport, whether you're in season, out of season. Um, could you all share with us what a typical week looks like for you and how you feel during that week? Yeah, so I pretty much have to plan my week, like the Sunday before, um, including how many hours of sleep I will get because it's hard out here. Um, yeah, so you have practice like pretty much every day and then you have your academics, you have to schedule in time for you to also rest so that you don't wear yourself out. Um, but yeah, pretty much practice every day, school every day, Saturday homework, Sunday homework, and then repeat. Yeah, I can also attest to just the busyness of it all, whether it's off season or like in the season, you could have a 6 a.m. lift and then a 8, 30 a.m. class, and then you're back in the athletic facilities again at 6 p.m. for conditioning or skills work. But really just like, it's really taught me to just like use a calendar and really plan out um, what I want to do each day in advance. And it doesn't necessarily always go that way, but just having thought about it before really helps me get through it. Um, I'll echo what everyone else has already said, but I don't know if other sports do this, but at least like last semester, um, our practices were in the afternoon. So I was able to sleep a little longer. But this year, like our practices practice are in the morning and something that at least I really appreciate about that is like, I do like go to classes a little later, but I also have like an opportunity to be a student and like go to club meetings and like 
eat lunch, eat dinner with friends and stuff like that. So we, we do have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I would say one thing I liked about football was our schedule was like the same every week. The practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, game Saturday, and then home Sunday. So that helped me just kind of like stay organized on top of stuff because I knew it was coming as far as practice schedule wise. Like forced me to reset like Monday became like kind of my Sunday. Now I didn't have football, so I was able to like sit down and like figure out the rest of the week how I was going to handle it work wise. Um, yeah, so swim was pretty nice because we got to choose like. Um, our practices like every day because there's three different options so you could schedule around your classes and exams for like go to a different practice or whatever you need to do to like make it work for you. But it was still was pretty busy, but it's good. For sure, y'all have busy days. Um so going back to your childhood, who was the first black athlete you saw and how did they inspire you? Um, as far as the first black athlete I saw, um, Derrick Rose on TV. I'm um, being from Chicago, watching him play for the Bulls, winning MVP. That, like, athletically was just inspiring because it was just from an entertainment, just like wow factor. It was just cool to see someone from my city representing the city and uh, succeeding on a high level. Um, but also, just like later on in my like youth and athletics, uh, probably Iman Shumpert, just because he's from. Um, Oak Park, Illinois, which is kind of near where I live in Chicago. And he funded the youth like travel team I played on. He had camps at his high school that I would go to every summer. And that was just inspiring because it really showed me kind of like what it's about from a professional athlete. And really just like anyone goes on to do something about getting back to the community he came from and something that I want to do one day as well. The first, um, I guess, black athlete that I remember just watching is Maya Moore. Uh, she was in the WNBA. She's, I guess, retired. I don't know. I think she just might have just stepped away. But um, definitely just like an all-star player, played at UConn, which has one of the best uh, basketball programs in women's basketball history. Uh, had a very successful career in the WNBA and then stepped away to do like social justice work, which is like, really nice and I also like got the opportunity to meet her a couple times so we came to a circle. Uh, I would say the first one I remember was Brent Petway. He played basketball at the University of Michigan back when I was a little kid. And I just remember being wild by him. Like he was very athletic, dunking all the time, kicked in with Air Georgia. Like I remember made my mom stay. She had me, I was three and my little sister, she wasn't even one yet, stay late like a triple overtime basketball game because I didn't want to leave. I wanted to keep watching him play. So yeah, he's the first one I remember. Um, the first athlete I remember like vividly is definitely Simone Manuel, just because I never really watched like, as a kid. Like I didn't, I didn't have much of an attention span. So <laughs> this one I was like, sorry, when I was like twelve. I remember watching her in the Olympics, and it was really inspiring because I just like got back from my swimming. I just remember watching her win the gold medal live, and that was like a really cool moment. Um, the first black athlete I saw in childhood was Usain Bolt. Um, I feel like his name kind of speaks for himself. Uh, he like inspired the crap out of me. That's a big part of why I'm a track athlete today. Um, in fact, my dad would joke that Usain Bolt was my uncle. Um, <laughs> and I believed it, obviously. <laughs> obviously now I'm sure like he's not, but you know, <laughs> he definitely, uh, contributed a lot to my characteristics as an athlete and just a person today. For sure, thank you. I feel like when you're able to see yourself like represented, it just, a lot of special things can happen for you because you start to believe in yourself and you start to see bigger things for you um, than you could have imagined. Um, going back to being when you were a kid, from sport or not from sport, who are some who is someone that you look up looked up to in a leadership position and why? Uh, 
Uh, someone I looked up to was Dr. Corbett. He was my principal from kindergarten through second grade. And I just remember like looking up to him. Uh, he was somebody who always looked out for me, like somebody I felt comfortable felt comfortable going to all the time. I needed somebody, someone to talk to. He was somebody I don't know. I just remember him always just being there. Somebody I always looked up to, like five, six years old. Um, similarly, my principal, Dr. Reese, from kindergarten to eighth grade. Um, she was a great principal. Uh, just seeing a black woman in a leadership position, like being that being the only kind of thing I know. You know, when you're a kid, like principal is the top dog, like <laughs> makes all the rules, could do no wrong, kind of. And so I just had never really questioned like if someone's race or gender or anything could like affect them reaching a position like that. So looking back on it now, it's definitely cool to have such a great principal. Yeah, echoing Langston and Jabari, my principal in elementary school is Mrs. Noor Muhammad. Um, definitely felt that uh, aspect of seeing someone like me, especially in education, um, where most of my teachers were white. Um, so that definitely kind of helped. She was also, again, the principal, so she was the, the top dog. So it was very nice to look up to her. Um, I had some pretty good principals, but uh, the person that I would say, I guess, I look up, looked up to, look up to, uh, Serena Williams. Um, I feel like we have a lot of similarities, like, I guess, interest-wise and also, I guess, sports-wise. She's definitely, like, she dominates in her sport um, and does so with grace at all times. Uh, and on top of that, she's a mom, owns, biz owns businesses. Um, someone I looked up to um, was Mrs. Denise Johnson, who was a big part of our special education program at my elementary school. And she's also a family friend of ours, and she was always just very like involved in the community, and it was always, she just seemed to be everywhere I was, like the sporting events. And she's always been a big cheerleader in my life, and she was a woman who takes charge of things and really gets the job done. For sure. Thank you. Uh, going back to, y'all had the same themes of education um, versus sport, which makes y'all student athletes, <laughs> the diversity in that. Um, why was education, why do you feel education, an educational leader was such a big part of your leadership now? I mean, I provide like a, a um, educator, but there is someone uh, in my life who she was a third grade teacher while I was in like second grade, and she also like became a family friend, had the same name as me, um, and I don't know. I guess kind of being that I was in elementary school, I had like a child's mind, so I guess I wasn't really able to understand it now. But I guess just growing up and getting to know her and understanding like she's that she's a teacher and she's like made great strides especially for like underprivileged youth um i think even though i guess like that's not necessarily my like goal in life it's cool just to see like someone who i saw as a teacher like still be a teacher but also see that she's making changes in other people's lives and i guess that's something that i aspire to do too for For me, when, when I was younger, I guess still now, like I really care about education and knowledge. Like in middle school, I was the kind of kid that would carry like a pocket dictionary in one pocket, <laughs> a pocket thesaurus in the other. Um, so yeah, like I was, I was really about it. And just having people, especially in leadership positions, continue to egg me on to do better and to be better. Um, yeah, I just want to embody that in the future, pass that on to others. Yeah, I would say, like, definitely my parents from a young age, like, pushed me education. Like, I always wanted to make sure, like, I was made sure I knew it was a priority in my life. So, now it's something I always cared for, but also a lot of my teachers. Like, I had a lot of different, like, black educators in my life, and they pushed me, like, saw my friends with me and pushed me and stuff like that. And it's just something I want to give back and, like, keep educating people around me, try and help them see their full potential as well. Um, yeah, my parents were also very, like, 
working with education when I was a kid. And my dad also he volunteered at the school a lot, so I'd spend a lot of time after school, a, a lot of time <laughs> at the school, like after hours, just like helping him make copies and stuff. So I got to know a lot of my teachers, and I like kind of made like a connection with them, and they really like helped me grow. And I just wanted to like keep learning throughout like all my years of school. Uh, I think I'd also say just having uh, academic stress so much at home as a kid, but also just thinking back uh, to elementary school, you know, I was a pretty talkative kid, ended up having to make a trip to Dr. Reese's office once or twice, and I think something that really, I really remember from those trips to the office, and just being like, rather than her being like necessarily angry at me or yelling at me, she really, she was more disappointed and Encouraging in a way because she just like really spoke to me about how she viewed me as someone who could be a leader in our school community, or just like in life or my energy. And having her like kind of breathe that into me and instill that in me, I think really stuck with me. For sure. So going off of some of what's already been said about the leaders that you've looked up to, what do you feel that those leaders did to empower you and inspire you to? Just dream big and have big dreams for yourself. I mean, I kind of just said it, but I think just overall, just like having someone, especially as a kid, just like tell you, you know, like that you can do whatever you want to do. Like you have potential to be a leader, to be the smartest kid in your class, to be a great athlete, to be a great person. I think. Just having someone say that to you is a lot for a kid. I feel like for me, having my teachers reaffirm my dreams as opposed to be like, you know, you should pick something more realistic. Um, like, for example, um, which is not realistic, I would tell my teachers I wanted to have all the knowledge in the world so that at some point, like, I just wouldn't need to learn anything anymore. And they were like, you know, go ahead, like, do it. Um, and, you know, I'm still doing it. I obviously am not going to obtain all the knowledge. I still have that drive to learn as much as I can because of them. Um, <clears throat> I think, I guess in addition to just having, I guess for example, the woman that I just mentioned uh, in my life, I've just always been surrounded like with people who wanted to like, wanted me to be successful, just like any, in all of like the schools that I went to, like it was just an environment where they wanted to support your needs. Um, and I guess like like they both said, just having someone like tell you and push you to do whatever you want to do is just really impactful. Um, yeah, definitely um, back to what you said about like reaffirming your dreams. Like I was confident at age eight that I would break Michael Phelps records. Like you could not convince <laughs> me otherwise. Um, spoiler alert, I have not. But like every like no one said anything. They're just like, Yeah, you can do it. And also just um having people in my life that pushed me when I needed to be pushed and also knew when to like take a step back and like comfort just like the balance of like pushing someone out of their comfort zone, but also like knowing what they're I would agree, kind of just echoing what's been said about having somebody who was there willing to push me when I needed to be pushed, didn't necessarily know it yet. Just like keep pushing me and always like taught me to just like keep pushing myself and always trying to learn and grow and just kind of keep some things people still to me from a young age. For sure. I know in my life having those people that push me out of my comfort zone, even though I don't want to go out of my comfort zone, have been really the most impactful people because they care so much about your development. Um, as a student athlete, even after life as a student athlete, and making sure you have those mentors in your life that really care about you and your personal development. Um, thinking about, speaking about mentors, do any of you have any mentors in your life right now that you just look up to and you go to them for advice when you're just like, I don't know what to do, how do I get through this? Or anybody you just like, like to get advice from? Um. I like to get advice from a recent graduate from WashU. His name is Chamela Izima. Um, that man is like, he's a beast. He was also on the track team. Um, 
He was a beast on the track team. He's a beast academically. He was pre-med. He actually just got into a lot of med school, so very much proud of him. Um, and like we, our interests are aligned. Like we both love track. We're both very much involved in music. We're both chem majors, and um, being a very ambitious chem major, like I try to put a lot of on my plate all the time. Um, but I would go to him for advice, and he would tell me, you know, take your time. You have a lot of time, or you should pick up the pace, just depending on what I'm dealing with at the time. Um, I'd say probably my dad, and he's been my whole life, like my mentor, you know, like as you like hope fathers would be, but especially since coming to college, just like he's constantly calling me, texting me, checking up on me, and it's annoying sometimes, but <laughs> he's definitely the first person I go to when I have any sort of like problem or confusion, whether it's in sports or school or it's like social life, or if I were just like want to talk about like crazy game LeBron just had, like he's definitely been a great mentor made him lucky to have him. Yeah, I would probably say my mom, like similar to Jabari, like I, she's the first person I go to with any problem. I'll just call her just to talk. Like, I, pretty much every day when I walk home from class, like, I got call her, we'll just talk about stuff. She's the first person I go to. Somebody that helps me talk through a lot of different things, both school, life, career, she's always just been there. Oh yeah, mine's definitely my dad. He's very talkative guy. So um, we usually, I usually call him, like try to call him every couple of days because if I ever like need something, he's always very helpful. He's a, he's a good listener and like he can really, he's a, he's really good at giving you like the advice that you need. And, like that's not always what you want, but it's always like the advice that you need. So that's mine. Is. Yeah, for me, it would definitely be both of my parents. Um, they, like I said definitely been like really support, supportive of me. And uh, I would say I probably call them about equally and you know, ask for their advice. Sometimes they get like jealous, not jealous, but like I'll call one a lot more than the other for like a month. And then they're like, are you mad at me? And I'm like, no, I just, whatever the situation, I just want to talk to my parent about. But definitely I talk to them, them the most. I feel that about them. So I'll call my mom and she's like, I got a bunch on speakerphone real quick, so your dad can hear and give advice too. And just he wants just wants to know everything too. Um, speaking of advice, your skills, what are some of the skills you've gained from being a student athlete here at WashU? I feel like this is one we're all gonna say, but time management um, and sacrifice and how to prioritize things because oftentimes there will be a lot on your plate and you can't do everything at once. Um, so you're going to have to choose. And yeah, it's just a skill that I've been able to develop more now being in college. Yeah, uh, in addition to time management, also um, just being able to look at things from different perspectives. Uh, our basketball season is super long and there are different like peaks and valleys that we go through. And I just feel like at each each and every point in time, like I'm always learning something new or getting to look at, I guess, other people's and myself, um, our journeys as the season goes on. And I think that's really obviously applicable to life outside of sports. I would say how to think on my toes. I think a big thing with football is we're always learning new things, we're always adding little adjustments or new plays and on the sidelines, being able to find that in life, being able to whenever some curveball come my way to be able to quickly think through it and adapt and really kind of uh, like react pretty quickly. Um, I think just having a growth mindset, like especially in one of the things I love about sports is that the sort of thing where you can if you put in like the time and the work, eventually like you reap the benefits and see the results of it. And like when you first start playing, I mean, at least for me, like when I first started playing basketball, I hated it. I was like the worst kid in the gym. <laughs> it sucked. I got tired. But just like putting in the time and falling in love with the game, I just think it's really like trickled into all the parts of my life. Just like recognizing 
like that I'm not like a finished product in any way and that I have the potential to like improve if I want to and try to. So yeah. Um for me it's definitely been time management but also like stress management. I'm not sure if that's a thing, but I'm making it a thing now. It is. So like just like because at the beginning of the season like the season of the year, definitely like moving into college for the first time. Like, I would be so, kind of overwhelmed sometimes. Like, everything I had to do, like, I had practice and, te like, tests and homework and stuff. But I think, like, as the years gone on, I've really learned how to, like, I guess compartmentalize things and just take things one at a time so I'm not as stressed. For sure. So, we've talked about your skills. We've talked about your experience. We've talked about how it's challenging. So then how do you stay resilient? How do you stay resilient in life? school in your sport um because that will also translate over to life after sports as well something uh my coach um has like really instilled and continues to instill um onto me and my teammates is the importance of like giving onto others and not you know because you're expecting anything back but more so because um it's it's the right thing to do, but also it's bigger than yourself and the joy that you feel when you give to others and see other people's joy and bring joy, uh, bring joy out of people, uh, something really special. And, you know, I've kind of always been like that, but just hearing her talk about that, like, all the time, it's really um, changed my perspective even more on that. And... To actually answer your question, I think that pouring on <laughs> support, I guess, um, into my teammates in practice, even when things aren't going the best, um, and you know, trying to facilitate that joy is how I stay resilient. I would say for me, it's trying to focus on the bigger picture. So just like whether it's like I'm in the weight room in the middle of a hard set, it's like I'm thinking, okay, how is this gonna help me next season in the fall? I'm studying for a test, like how's it going to help me do well on this test to help me get a job and keep doing that. Just trying to stay focused on like where I'm going, just trying to stay on the angle, so I just keeps me motivated throughout the tough parts. A saying that my coach, Coach Styles, has is not for me, for them. Um, and in my life specifically, I care about a lot of people, I have a lot of loved ones. And when I think about all of the things that I'm doing, I'm thinking about how I'm affecting them in my actions and it just really gets me thinking like I really need to do this for them like I not only for me yes but it's about the influence that I'm gonna have on other people for example I have three younger brothers and they keep me going <laughs> like there are times where I'm like you know what maybe being a chem major isn't it but you know I'm in it and I also want to inspire them to do great things and be great people and that has really kept that fire of resilience burning in me. Um, I think a lot of the battle is like, really like showing up, but more than showing up, being like present when you're going through a hard practice, like you have a test the next morning, you just failed the last one, and like you're in the gym, it's 8 p.m., like you gotta study after, but yeah, I think a lot of it is just being present and like like everyone says, remembering the bigger picture, why you're doing it, who you're doing it for, who you're doing it with. But yeah, I just think a lot of the battle of resilience, especially as a student athlete, is just whether wherever you are, just like being there 100% and giving your all in that moment. Um, mine's also definitely just looking at the bigger picture, like just thinking about like why I'm doing something, especially during hard sets or like hard lifts. I've been talking about the end of the season, like my goals and what the outcomes that I want to see. And just like also just being around my teammates probably, my friends, because I don't know, they're always really supportive, so that always helps. For sure, having a supportive circle is key. As a student athlete, life after sports, um, so thinking of your time here at WashU, or even when you were in high school, middle school, elementary, thinking about all the coaches you've had, what is some of the best advice that coach has ever given you? It's 
there's a lot to choose from. You know, I've had a lot of great coaches, but I think one that's been ringing true to me a lot recently is from my coach, Pat Yucko. It's awesome to see him here. Thanks for coming, coach. <laughs> but just recognizing that, like, especially, like, on a D3 level, like, I mean, none of us are getting paid through NIL, at least not yet. <laughs> but, but, you know, like, it's hard to go pro from D3, so a lot of people aren't thinking about that. But just, like, recognizing that, like, being with your teammates, just, like, the selflessness of it all, and, like, the family, for me, the brotherhood, my teammates. Yeah. I think just, like, recognizing that it's probably the best or one of the best times of my life and just really being present and enjoying every moment regardless of how great it's going, how hard it might be. Um, one piece of advice I got um, from my coach comes again from Coach Styles, one of his sayings. He has a lot of sayings. Um, it's that, uh, what is it? It's comparison is the enemy of progress. Um, I'm someone that's very, very, very hard on myself. Um, and like Jabari was saying, like we were in D three schools. Like I'll be comparing how I perform to like D one and like, damn, like I'm not doing well enough. Like I have to do better. Um, and I feel like that kind of kind of mentality can push me to strain myself. Whereas I can just focus on how I'm doing now, what I can do to be better, and just focusing more on me and instead of comparing myself to other people because I also don't know what they've gone through, what they're doing um, to get to where they are now. That's, that's the advice I got from Coach K I'm sitting in the room now. It's just like being made, positive mental attitude. So that's something I always do, like day to day life. So I always try to have a positive mental attitude. I have like different methods that I go through for myself to keep myself positive. And it's something I always tell people like, just if you stay positive, like everything becomes a lot better and stuff gets easier. Yeah, I'll echo. I think um, just being it's like we've all said sometimes times can get really hard just in practice and games um and outside of that but just trying to be as positive as possible um and like i said earlier doing it for your teammates um rather than for yourself that can make things a lot easier um me and my club coach um is big on trusting the process and balance so we always say like Rome, he always say Rome was built in a day, which is pretty cliche, but he would um, talk about how like, like each little thing you do every day leads up to the big thing. Like you're not going to see like huge improvements from day to day, but like those tiny like 1% improvements are what can get you to where you want to go. And just to balance your life, like balance swimming and school and your happiness and everything, because you feel like focusing too much on one thing, it's not, like you need to be enjoying what you're doing. For sure. Um, since being at WashU, you all are in different spaces from senior to first year. Um, who have you met at WashU that inspired you from your coach, staff, faculty, your teammate, a past teammate? Like, who do you just look up to here and you're just like, yes, I can keep going, I can do this, I got this. She's absolutely going to hate me, but we're all going to look to the back of the room and look at our senior back there, Samantha Weaver. <laughs> um, oh, I love her. I love her so much. She's like the best teammate ever. Um, no matter like what she has going on, she never lets that get in the way of, you know, how she comes to practice, how hard she practices and plays. Um, and she's just definitely an inspiration. And I'm glad that I've gotten to play with her. For me, um, it's Eka Josa. She graduated last year. Um, I see a lot of nods, so we know that she has accolades. Um, <laughs> she is like an amazing person academically, athletically, as a friend. Um, she's someone that's been a big part of my life and kept me going here. Um, and also just like on the track, like she is, she's a beast. Like she seems very, like when you talk to her, she's like very nice and very calm, but when she's in that, competition mode like she's in it like it's game time um and it's really it's incredibly inspiring to witness 
I'm not sure I have a specific person, but just honestly to like upperclassmen as a whole, they're oh, some of them right there in front of us, but <laughs> um, they always just, they seem to have like their lives together. <laughs> and, you know, just watching them throughout the year, like especially the seniors, watching them get like, through job interviews and like get these opportunities and stuff and just like talk to them about how like their four years and like it just kind of like, like and I'm like, I can do this too. And they're always really helpful and like willing to like help you with like things you need or if you have questions, they're pretty approachable. So I would say probably uh, Andrew Whitaker. So what he was my host, my favorite night. So I've known him since like before I got to watch you. And like hanging out with him, he was like I, I was like being like that's what I want to be when I get to watch you in a sense. Like he was really outgoing, really social, doing great things both on and off the field. And even as I've been here. He's just somebody that I still look up to for how he succeeds in the classroom on the field. He's somebody I can go to, give me a lot of advice. He's somebody I can find in a lot. Um, all my teammates in their own ways, <laughs> but especially um, this year, Justin Hardy. He's been, you know, he's been battling cancer all season and playing through it. And just the playing is, it's incredible. Like it's an incredible watch, but. More so just how others focused, he's been through it, and just the positivity he has every day and really brings to our team, and just the campus as a whole, honestly, is really inspiring. Sure, thank you. Um, on the flip side, from athletics to the classroom, what class has been like the most inspiring here and just made you want to learn more that you've taken at Wash U? My freshman year, I took a class called Present Moral Problems with Kit Wellman. Um, so I, I like to think, overthink a lot. And so I guess the, the I guess, um, gist of the class was like we read um, two like varying sides of like the same moral issue. So I guess abortion, same sex marriage, things like that. And um, just, I don't know, the discussion, because it was also like my first semester. So just, I guess, the discussion that I had in the class like gave me a taste for just how intellectual everyone here is, um, but also really just let me overthink as much as I wanted to. And it was like just a very compelling class as well. I took a class last spring called Economic History of China. It was like, it attracted me really first at first because like I study economics and Chinese, so it was like a really good combination of my two interests. I really just love like the discussion in that class. Like the professors did a really good job of like including everybody and like making sure like we saw like the point of everything. I think it's probably the one class of school I remember being like excited to do the reading for. So that like really made that class stand out for sure. Um, my class would probably be Roots of Ferguson. I took it last semester. It was really interesting. It was kind of like a sociology, but also like a history class where we talked about um, how like segregation and like laws, how they still um, affect like today and today's like layout of society. And like talk about the Dunbar Divide and stuff like that. And the readings were really long, but they were actually, they were really interesting. I feel like I just, I've always liked history, so I feel like I just, Learned a lot from that. For me, it was uh, Musics of the World with Dr. Stewart. Um, I'm a big music guy, and I took that what, like freshman year. So coming into it, I thought I knew everything about mm -hmm. Musics of the World um, because, like, you know, I live here in America, so I feel like I'm pretty well versed, and I'm also Nigerian, so I feel like I, I have a solid background in African music. But um, I was really wowed by how much I didn't know. Um, and Dr. Stewart's also just a great professor, and she's taught me a lot and instilled a lot of, or rather, instilled more love in music for me. Um, I took a class last semester. It was called Black Youth Justice, taught by Jeff Ward. And I don't know if you'd ever know it, but I think the class really inspired me just from the standpoint of 
like really care about any sort of issue or anything in life that you can like even if it might not be something that's necessarily lucrative like you can pursue it and even in just teaching other people about it you can help to they can help contribute to it just being exposed to the content yeah it's a great class great readings for sure so going from your student you're an athlete and you also have your interests outside of sports how do you feel that sports are a bridge between community and activism uh, i feel like with a lot of professional athletes we see how like they start foundations or uh, donate a lot of money to the causes that they support so i think that could be one way um, i know at least for me personally uh, i own a business and a brand that's based off like my likeness and my image and the whole goal of it is to uplift, inspire, and empower women. And I'll tell a little story. So when I was eight, I started playing basketball with guys in like an all boys rec league. I was the only girl. Then when it was time for middle school, I was gonna play middle school basketball. And then the rec, rec league, they kicked me out because they said that I couldn't do both. But there were guys that were doing it as well. So I guess that was my first like hint of, okay, there's something different about me. Probably because I was a girl and I was also like the biggest, best in, in the league too. Um, so uh, just having that experience and knowing how much like I appreciate being a woman, woman and how much I enjoy spreading positivity and lifting others up. Uh, that's how Christina Girl and Christ in a Girl, you know, was born and tries to continue to uplift them. Something that's been emphasized a lot through my years on the track team is that you're not just here to compete, you're also here to contribute. Um, for example, uh, middle of last semester, the entire track team went to the Jackie Joyner Kersey um, Center. Um, if you don't know who that is, that's a former Olympian. She's great. Um, and, you know, we just helped out. We got our hands dirty and we did work. Um, and something our, coach was, something our coach would say is that, like, it's not just about competing, like you have to contribute, you have to be a part of the change. You can't just come here and be like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do track and then I'm gonna go home. And that's it, like you have to be a part of the change that you wish to see. Yeah, I think sports are a great, like, vehicle to use to give back. So something like I've done throughout, like when I go home and did in high school is coach. Something I do is like coaching younger kids, both elementary school and middle school, I go back and coach in my high school, I go home all the time. I think it's just a great way for you to come back and just do something that you already know well, just kind of like give back and impart your knowledge and it'll allow you to help bring them up as well. You know, um, just kind of echoing how sports seems to be definitely a great vehicle for like activism. My old club team, we um, practice at Ohio State, and they're probably one of the biggest club teams in the state of Ohio. So every year we have a thanks for giving meet where we do a canned food drive for the Ohio Food Bank. And it'd be like a competition between groups, like who can bring, which um, age group can bring the most um, food. And it, it got pretty wild. We had to bring in like, we had to like use a loading dock because one kid brought like tr like three trucks worth of stuff. We ended up donating like, <laughs> it was a whole ordeal, <laughs> like thousands of pounds of food. And it was always just, um, and it was really cool to be a part of that, just to know you're like making a difference in the community. Yeah, I think just like recognizing that getting to play sports, especially at this point, like on a college level, is really a privilege. And so just like thinking back to high school, different charity events, going to different like food banks, things like that, similar to what other panelists said. But even like getting to serve in like student athlete advisory committee here, or even just like being asked to do this panel really, to me is like, it's like from a representation standpoint, just like taking advantage of the opportunity that sports give me and getting back to it however I can. For sure. When I started, um, right after I got out of college and I started trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, I got introduced to student athlete development. And then I didn't realize that through student athlete development, I could connect athletes to the community, help build them leadership skills that were more 
were um, just a great opportunity for them to learn career skills. So, but focusing on the community piece, getting to um, start a program where we had our student athletes go to the Boys and Girls Club once a week and start mentoring those kids, because I fell in love with those kids, um, was really impactful for me even after sports. Um, getting to just see their, see those little kids that were six, seven, and eight start to see themselves with more and start to see education past high school as an option. That if you work hard, you can, you can achieve a lot and if you don't give up. Um, going off of activism, how do you feel that um, your role in the community has been elevated or more prominent for you since you've been a student athlete here at WashU, the unique platform that you'll have? Um, I think since being here at WashU, just like, it has always been true as like a student athlete, but even more so here, just like that you represent more than, like I represent more than myself, whether that's Wash U, like when I'm around St. Louis or men's basketball on campus, or just like, because I have a blue Powerade bottle, like in class, <laughs> people know I'm a student athlete. And so just making sure that I, or even just like being a black student athlete, really, just like representing that in the best way that I can, that's in line with like university and athletics values, but also my own. For me, it's helped in like different clubs I'm involved in. So I saw the executive board of our Black Men's Coalition, and like one of the things we've been like, put, like one of the things we push is like connections between grades. And being on a football team has allowed me to help foster those connections with younger grades because I immediately know like all the freshmen and sophomores on the football team, so I can go to them and be like, okay, have your classmates come to this, have your friends come to this, and promote through them. That's really allowed us to kind of grow in those relationships. Yeah, in addition to like being a student athlete um, and being part of SAG Student Athlete Advisory Committee, um, I'm also like part of things that aren't related to sports and it's kind of cool how WashU is like so small, but it's obviously a college, so it's pretty big and um, understanding those two parts, still being like what, being a part of what I'm a part of and seeing how like different people are a part of like the same things as me and so like they could be two completely different interests that I have but also see like the same people there and I think um, just understanding how collaborative of a community wash you is I think being able to because a lot of the times like the people that I'm seeing in these different spaces um, they're in like leadership positions so taking what I know like I've learned from different sports that I'm a part of and um, working with other people who might not be athletes and creating uh, like for example I'm like the vice president of Queens which is uh, a space for black women on campus and like none of the other execs are like athletes but we uh, all like are able to share our experiences and make like a great exec board and then of course make great like programs for black women on campus so Um, so at Sign Up Athletics, I'm also involved in this club called MedLife, where we like um, pool fundraisers and like power average try to raise money for um, like projects in other countries that have to do with public health. And I'm also I'm interested in public health, so it's kind of a cool way to like put that interest into something like positive towards the community. And so right now we're like trying to raise money to build um, like a little medical complex and village in a foreign country. Um, outside of athletics, but not that far from it, um, Langston and I are actually both execs on the WashU Black Letter Winning Athletes Coalition. Um, and it's really, being on it has really given me perspective um, on being an athlete, because it's not just that, like we specifically are involved with like involving Black student athletes in decisions made 
by the athletic department and like working together as one unit. Um, and you know, it may seem like being an athlete may seem like one dimensional. Um, like you just have to practice and compete, but being part of this has changed my perspective on that. Sure, thank you. Um, I feel like as a student athlete, it's always like, like hearing more of your stories and all of the dimensions and intersectionalities of your identities, it's just incredible. Like y'all don't just play sports, you go to school, you have activism you're passionate about, um, your leadership skills. Um, so maybe it's a little premature to think about this, but so taking, thinking now, what do you want to do after WashU with all of this experience? Mm. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, after Wash you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be stuck in academia for a little bit. Um, I would like to get my PhD in chemistry. The end goal is to be an educator, um, but I got to make a little bit of money first. So before that, I'm aiming to join the national lab, um, work in chemical energy storage, uh, particularly renewable energy storage. Um, yeah, that's the goal. I'm still parsing things out, but uh, with my psychology major, I definitely hope to pursue further education and eventually open my own practice. Um, and I definitely want to stay involved in the sports world. And I have like, just like with my brand and business, I've like been able to interview uh, college athletes and professional athletes uh, at you know, different events. So I want to like keep on with that. Uh, maybe be a sports broadcaster and also continue developing the business just to make my um, outreach as wide as possible. Um, so as a freshman who's undecided, this is like my top five <laughs> more, least favorite questions to be asked. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, I think I want to do something in like the field of like public health or um, global health. Just, I don't know, something, some, I want to work with people, so something in like that area. I don't really know that much yet. Uh, so I guess well, I'm the senior here. So after graduation, I'll be work. I know I'll be working for a bank in New York in their investment banking division, doing that in the finance world. So I'll say like I had no idea what I wanted to do when I got here. Like I knew what I wanted to study, but, like the path I I had no idea. It was just like through people I met and like talking to my teammates, like their experiences in investment banking that kind of made me interested in wanting to go to that. Honestly, like, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do after watch you. I would love to play basketball as long as possible. But also, uh, I really care about, like, mental health education, especially for kids. And also, like, financial literacy in a way for, like, black youth. So I, maybe one day I'll be on that path helping kids understand, like, how to have great understanding of their mental health and their finances. But whatever I want to do, I, I know that I want to do something that like helps and inspires others. For sure. 
Thank you all for sharing so much. Um, I'm looking at the time and I'm realizing we should probably wrap up and open it up to the audience if they have any questions or if Zoom land has any questions for us. And also, if you ask a question, we have these t-shirts as thank you. <clears throat> they were designed by our um, athletic director in honor of our core value of inclusion. <clears throat> so if you ask a question, you get a t-shirt. It's true athletics form. We love a t-shirt toss. <laughs> the t-shirts are nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what has been your favorite memory so far? Like, in general? <laughs> um, I guess my favorite memory would be our conference meet in Atlanta. It was uh, one or two weeks ago. Yeah, time alludes me, but it was, this was some time ago. It was a really, it was just a really fun meet. Um, being able to, uh, like it was my first one, obviously. So just being able to go out and compete and have fun and then watch my teammates like do really well and compete and then cheering them on especially was really, really fun, especially the relays. Um, so yeah, that was the highlight. Um, I have two specific favorite memories, one athletic, one academic. The athletic one was uh, two years ago, UAA championships. Um, it was just a crazy time to watch you outperformed everyone and it was great to just you know be part of that team and witness everyone do great things academically freshman year passing gen chem um, <laughs> it is like harder than the grad level chemistry class i'm in right now um and you know it's just like getting through it and succeeding in it just really like it's it's Um, I think this isn't super specific, but just the time spent, like as a winter sport, specific, my bad, <laughs> specifically basketball, like we had to come back from winter break early. So we were the only ones on campus, us and the women's team. And just honestly, just spending that time with my teammates over the break is probably one of my favorite memories, just because it was literally just basketball and hanging out with them. And so. <laughs> I just had, I had never felt so close to a group of people like outside my family. Just from getting dinners or watching all the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> it's definitely one of my favorite memories. Uh, I would say somewhere in Alabama, I have two one athletically and one outside of sports. I remember one athletically would be sophomore year. We played Illinois Wesleyan in the rain. It's like so our goal that year is to get, just get a shout out, and we got that. And it was cold and rainy. It was probably one of the most fun I've ever had on a football field. And then the non course one was last school year in class for a charity. I ate a Carolina Reaper pepper. It's like in the moment, it wasn't that fun. But looking back on it, it was a pretty cool experience. And like my professor ate the pepper and then taught the lecture like nothing happened. Meanwhile, I was running like in and out, getting water all the time, and that was just like pretty cool to watch. <laughs> Um, thank you guys for doing this. Um, something I was thinking about, just like, what is it like being a black athlete here? Um, what are some of the struggles you deal with? Um, and like, what are the memories from that? Um, I think it's just Um, I think regardless of what level you're at, um, one of the biggest challenges I see faced as black athletes is being made to feel like we are more than human, like we're superhuman, if that makes sense. Um, which therefore, like because we're superhuman, our achievements aren't as great. Um, because they're like, oh, you should be doing that anyways. Like it's it's nothing impressive. Um, when we are human, like we should be regarded as such. Um, so that's a challenge I've had to face, especially with an injury. I'm like, damn, I should be doing way better than I am doing currently. But yeah, so yeah, 
That's a big challenge. Um, I feel like I'm also still trying to parse this out, but I think, um, so I've been in private school for the past, like, seven years, and they've all, like, been predominantly white, um, institutions, which, it's fine, I've gotten great education, like I said, I've always been supported in whatever aspirations that I had, um, but I think, not necessarily not always feeling like included, um, but more so just trying to find like what, where is my space and how do I make sure that in this space that I'm being like seen and recognized and understood? Because um, I guess something that I didn't really realize when I came to college is that like, I could think that I'm, uh, specifically in sports, I could think that I'm having or expressing one demeanor and that might not be what other people are perceiving and that's not something that I like I said I'm very like positive like I, I try to always you know be that way but if I'm not necessarily um, laughing smiling joking jumping up and down all the time it doesn't mean that I'm not happy it just means that I'm kind of at, at rest and so I just think just trying to navigate like I said my place how I'm coming off and um I guess it's like I said, this is something I'm trying to figure out. And I think eventually, like when I get into professional workspace, like maybe I'm going to have to change that. I don't really know. But it's definitely something that's kind of hard to navigate sometimes. Because there's sometimes <laughs> there is this stereotype that, especially with Black women, that like we're always angry or frustrated or woe well, is me, which personally is not my case at all. Um, I suppose it was also like I went to a really like high academic PWI high school, um, and this wasn't even necessarily always like the case, but especially like as I get older, I think it's more so just like an awareness it can be isolating at times. Like it's not to say that like oh I feel like no one understands me or like I don't have any friends like within my team or my personal like circles. But sometimes, like the first time, like in college, like I sat in like a classroom and like looked around, like I'm the only black student in the room. And, you know, sometimes it can like kind of bring in feelings of like an imposter syndrome, but yeah, and so, like even athletically, like sometimes I know like being like one of like three or four black uh, athletes on my team, Sometimes it can feel a little like isolated from a cultural perspective, or it's like maybe like a sensitive topic might like kind of just like come up in relaxed conversation. You may not know whether to pay attention to it or just kind of let it pass. But I will say that it's a great community here at WashU, black students and black athletes, like in Blue Black and other organizations. But yeah, I think just like sometimes it can be isolated. Yeah, I'll kind of echo what Jabari said, but I think like similar to what he said at the end, also like my teammates, some of the other black student athletes in my grade, we've done a great job of just kind of like sticking together and always having each other's backs. We study together, you know, like outside of stuff, like that's been like a really key happening, kind of mitigating a lot of that imposter syndrome feeling. Um, yeah, same for me. I've always been like, uh, like going to PWIs my whole life since kindergarten. And I've always, and swimming is not really that diverse of a sport. So I've always been like one of the only, or the only like black swimmer on my team. And overall, my teams have been very inclusive, but sometimes, like I guess saying, like the imposter syndrome and like when things come up in conversation and you don't really know like how to, like whether you should say something or not. And like just some things like you can't really talk about with like teammates that just, they wouldn't really get where you're, where you're coming from. I chime in as, as, as a former student athlete. Um, even in grad school, I went to a PWI. I studied sport management. 
I'd be in the room and I look around and I'm like, oh, there's mostly only men in this room and men that don't look like me and men that didn't even play sports. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're gonna have those situations, but something for me that's been like really key is making sure even if, no matter what my friends look like, making sure I have a great circle around me that are allies, that are gonna advocate for me and stand up for me and just really support me. Um, whether they're my teammate, my former teammates that I'm still close with, or my coworkers, just making sure that I am surrounding myself with really positive people that I can talk to and have those crucial conversations with, no matter what they look like. Because um, I think what really helps with being inclusive is taking the time to stop, listen, and ask questions. Because you want to learn and educate yourself on what other people are going through. Um, and it's a great question that he asks that just because people want to know, they want to understand. And it's, I'd rather have that question than assumptions or being too scared to ask it. So great question. I just I wanted to follow up to that question because it is a good question. And but I wanted to and then Michelle, you brought up the fact that like you've had you know you've had allies in your life that have, have you know and there's a lot of folks in the room who don't look like you all, right? And how 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 um have people in your life been good allies? I think we we want that we want to you know take those actions. So you said you said stop, listen, ask questions. So what other actions have people taken to be good allies and to make you make sure that you are welcome in this space, that we can maybe model. Um, I'd say, I think the bit, like the foundation of it is just like great general like human connection. It's like connecting as people, laughing, enjoying each other, this company. But also like when it comes to asking questions, like making sure like you're asking like really to learn and listen and less and maybe like you ask and maybe like you don't even really have a response you know what I mean but it's like really making sure you are listening more so than listening like listening to learn more so than listening to like respond or even necessarily like come to the conclusion right now yeah I would say similar to what Jabari said just like kind of having as you know in as open mind as possible like one of the things I love about the culture on the football team is we all like really open-minded and we're always like learning off of each other talking about all different experiences and just being willing to learn is like a really big thing um this might sound counterintuitive but i've been asked this question often and my response is always that you have to learn how to unlearn the things that you've been taught um and you know like everyone learns differently and everyone has received different information but if you're trying to then pile um an ideology that might not necessarily coincide with one that's been instilled in you. It's going to be a little difficult to try and help the people that you're trying to help. Um, so trying to unlearn those um, lessons that you've learned or the habits that you've picked up is what I feel like is a very important step. So combined with uh, the two of them said, um, the human connection piece and unlearning, which you already know, I think uh, all of us uh, psychologically always have like, well, sometimes all the time have uh, predispositions or uh, prejudices against anybody, like no matter what they look like. And sometimes that can be a, hinder a hindrance to even wanting to make that human connection. And I think, I personally see the beauty in being friends or like just talking to people that have different experiences because at the end of the day, it only grows your, um, I guess, cultural awareness and grows, I guess, your knowledge. So I think kind of understanding that, I guess, assuming that the person that you're interacting with is like a good person, that you're only going to grow from that experience. And if you keep that in mind, I think it will be easier to let go of those pre prejudices and actually strive for that human connection that you want to make. Should do some internal self self evaluation there. Yeah, I agree. Just um, like 
being able to have a group of people and like meeting people from all different like walks of life. And that's one of my favorite things about college is like meeting so many like people from like everywhere and have different experiences, be able to like just have open conversations and where we all have open minds. And I think sometimes you don't really have to have answers, but you just need to like start by just listening and just really hearing what people are saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first, I wanted to thank you guys for, for doing this. Um, Y'all are all very impressive as students and athletes and role models. Um, and my question is, what piece of advice would you have for like a young black potential student athlete or someone who's kind of trying to figure it out um, in terms of like kind of best prepare for the experience as, that they're going to have in the future? Just like how to best prepare for success, you know, like when they're at an early age. <laughs> I think that uh, knowing yourself and being true to yourself is uh, probably one of the hardest things to do, but it's probably one of the most important things to do, especially when you come to to an environment like college where you're being influenced by so many different perspectives, some that might be good, some that might be not the best for you. Uh, so I think that's, it's definitely something that maybe like not all of us are like done, you know, I don't think we're done figuring ourselves out, but when you know who you are, when you know why you're here, when you know who you're doing it for, it makes it a lot easier to, uh, Turn a blind eye to anything that's irrelevant to to your goals. Um, that's a really good question. Um, and in addition to Christina's point about knowing who you are, you need to know not only your limits but when to push them. Um, I say know your limits so you don't strain yourself. And obviously, if you know your limits and you're like, okay, this is my limit, you know, like this is all I can give, you're not going to go anywhere. So you need to know. When is that time where I need to push to be better, push to be greater? Um, and I feel like that's that's something I figured out not too long ago, but I feel like if I had known that when I was younger, I'd be a little bit better. You say about might actually be an uncle. <laughs> you might be the same about I'd say for me as a former black student athlete, um, knowing your values, what you value, and in that recruiting process, going where you're valued and seen and heard. I think um, all of y'all can remember when you were in the recruiting process and which coaches were the most intentional and which were keeping it real with you. Um, and that's why I went to where I went because I had a head coach, she was a woman of color. She was intentional, she was consistent. She let me know that it was more than basketball um, and that she also wanted me to get an education. So just really being able to read the genuineness in people is a skill you pick up, but when you find it, you find it. And I know they found it here. I kind of want to echo what Michelle said. It's kind of like, yeah, like knowing like kind of what you want and going for it. And like she said, like picking up on different things and genuineness in people. Like one story I have from when I was like going recruiting, visiting schools and recruiting. I knew I wanted to study economics and Chinese, but economics was always kind of like the biggest thing I focused on. And I was visiting a school and I asked about it, economics and Chinese. And I kind of paused and it just went on like a 10 minute thing about the Chinese department. It didn't mention economics at all. But to me, I was kind of like, okay, so it's probably not necessarily a good thing. It kind of knocked this school off my list of just kind of like knowing what you want and like figuring out how to get what you want. It's like a really big thing. Um, I think my advice would probably be being able to block out like people who are not a positive like person in your life like not everyone's going to be supportive of you so you need to um be able to just like figure out who um is really like has your back and give time to those people um so my question is, how can, kind of jumping back a little bit on some of the things, uh, how can like teammates, coaches, admin further 
this conversation just like do better by lab student athletes, but student athletes, you know, just like generally, um, how can we just like move forward or grow, continue to grow, not necessarily move forward, but just like continue to, to show support. Um, I guess the summer of uh, my freshman year, going into my freshman year, uh, the CDI, Mark was up there. <laughs> um, he uh, hosted, I guess, sessions with the basketball team um, on, I guess it was, it was more, I guess from my perspective, more of like an educational situation, but also a time for discussion about uh, issues related to race. Around that time, George Floyd had just uh, passed. So uh, that was kind of a focal point of a few of our conversations. And in like that space, it was a time for everyone to speak, everyone to reflect. And it was kind of hard for everyone to do that, which is definitely understandable. But I think when, or it, so I guess my first thing would be if possible, like find a way to find a, a program like the one that Mark had for us uh, to get the conversation rolling. But then when you are granted the opportunity to like use it, because there's no point in doing it if you know it's not, ideas aren't going to bounce into the zone. Yeah, going off the programming, the CDI on their website, they do have a link that you can click on and they have like a bunch of trainings that you can request for them to come to your teams. Um, Dr. Williams in the back on, that's been operating our Zoom. Um, she heads all of the programming and it's from unconscious biases to understanding intersectionality. Um, it's a wide range of programming she offers. So um, that's another way of going off of what Christina mentioned about programming and just education. If you could change one thing about your experience, what, what was it and why? And then someone else has, um, based on the recent events that fueled the BLM movement, has it affected or influenced you? Can you just repeat it? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so the first question was um, can you, if there was one thing that you could change about your experience, what would it be and why? And then the other question is, based on the recent events that fueled the BLM movement, I'm guessing from 2020, um, how has that affected or influenced you? Uh, for the second question regarding the BLM movement, I think uh, that the series of events really forced me to take a look at myself as a Black woman and actually consider how other people look at me and uh it wasn't like a hard thing to do but it was like i guess realizing that that's something that i had to do where it was kind of like startling if you will because obviously like i am aware of you know my color my gender but uh in relation to how like there some people support BLM, some people don't and how how that comes back to how people look at me, that was definitely, I guess, uh, uh, an eye-opening time. I kind of answered both, I kind of both questions leading to the same answer. It was like, the one thing I guess I would change is I wish I had gotten more involved in things earlier. My college career kind of took me to like my junior and senior year to really get involved in things. I kind of just like get myself out there more. But I also think like those events in 2020 helped that. Like I had conversations with my teammates and our Anthony, our athletic director, just like surrounding that, and how we can do better in the athletic department. And Wu Black, like it was founded that summer as well. So I think that also kind of spurred me to get more involved in the community, get myself out there more. It's something that I wish I had done earlier in my college career. Um, to also try and answer both questions, one thing that I wish I changed was the speed at which I cared about my mental health, because um, it's and then through the lens of that summer of 2020, um, mental health definitely took a, hit, a huge hit um, 
for not just black people, but I feel like for everyone. Um, and so, yeah, if I could go back, I would definitely not only prioritize it, but actively seek out better mental health. Um, I agree on that point. I think definitely something I would change is the beginning of the year, like prioritizing my mental health and like trying to have a better mindset towards things. Because like obviously now I've had like a great season and a great time and everything, but the beginning I was kind of, I don't know, it was a challenge at first. And similar to the summer of 2020, like I guess Christina said, like it really brought things to like the forefront of your mind like I always knew like the back of my mind like all I was aware of all every all the issues and everything like I had the police talk like don't be like like hands on the wheel and don't be um like don't give them a reason to like bother you but I think it just really took it from the back of my mind to like like it was like right in front of you and it really like kind of took a hit on like, like everyone's mental health Um, as far as the summer of 2020, I think something I really learned from it was definitely just being able, willing and able to just like have tough conversations with people maybe you didn't think you would have to, or like maybe people you don't even know that well, but sometimes like people want, want like patience, you know, not everybody necessarily had like the same experience as you or the same like training or education. So having like the patience to kind of like teach in a way but not feeling like you have to you know if you're willing to extend yourself in that way just having that kind of grace and patience with others um, and then as far as something i wish i had changed i also like langston said wish that i kind of got more involved with different organizations specifically like black organizations on campus since like my freshman year which is also the advice I would give to a younger black athlete to go back to the question. Another question. Oh, oh. What do we already answer? Um, <laughs> you can ask. Yeah. Hey guys, great job. Um, my question is what would you fight to keep about your experience as a black athlete at WashU? Um, excellent question. I would specifically, um, on the track team, I would fight to keep that sense of family that we have, at least amongst black track. Um, I remember freshman year, I was added to the black track chat and then we had our first like gathering and that was the most fun I'd had like all freshman year. Um, and it's really informed like my choices as, um, leader on the track team and also as a person since now I'm the captain um so like reaching out to those younger black athletes um making sure that they know that they have someone um that's something that I want to leave behind and make sure stays alive when I'm gone yeah I want to echo what Naomi said except like on the football team same thing just like the family atmosphere I have with my black teammates Hang out together like all the time. Some of my favorite off the field memories are hanging out at Woods House Friday night before games, just talking, playing games, and just like being around each other. And I think that's something that like I really value and really want to have like to continue on with the next of the next groups of black athletes. Um so something I would fight to keep is uh the diversity of um uh, I guess the student athletes here. I know that when I was doing my recruiting process, like I, that was definitely something I was looking for. I didn't want to be only black person on my team. Um, so, and I, I could have been, but I didn't want to. And I, and I know for a fact, especially having played like club basketball, like all my teammates were, were black for the majority of the time that I played. And I know, um, that when they were looking for their colleges too, like they might not have wanted to be on a team with any white people or wanted to fight with the majority or whatever, but I know that um, school
schools could potentially miss out on talent because when they look and see like no diversity on a roster, like they're not gonna wanna go to school here no matter how great of an education they're gonna get. And especially when you don't have any experience like at a PWI from middle school to now, it's not something that you're gonna like, oh, like, why don't I go to why don't I go to a PWI for college? So I would definitely fight to keep and continue to grow the diversity. Um, well, I like some of the other answers. Uh, I always remember, like, when I first committed here, my teammate was a senior now, Cam Mack. It's one of the first people to text me when I committed, just, like, welcoming me to the team and just let me know that, like, as a black athlete, and just, like, a teammate, he has my back. And I just really want to. I think about it a lot, actually, but, like, I really want to, and I'm excited to, like, as I get older and, like, move up in the ranks, so, like, a junior and a senior, to, like, extend that hand and like kind of guide along any like younger black uh teammates that i have in the future just like keeping that community within the team tight um well i haven't been here all that long compared to you guys <laughs> so there hasn't been a whole lot of like things i guess but so this is kind of my one so i i guess things like this because i really um enjoyed just like listening to everyone fellow panelists, just everyone's answers to questions and just having this discussion. Um, even though I was really nervous before it, <laughs> and all my friends have heard me been talking about this for like a, like a week. So I apologize for that. But yeah, this has definitely been a good experience for me. Um, are there conversations that you believe should be had with your teammates? Um, Race or what is your advice about that? Well, that's short. Yeah. Sure. 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 Um, short answer I feel like there will always need to be conversations that need to be had. Specifically uh, with my team, I feel like the captains and the coaches have been very proactive about having conversations. For example, that summer of 2020, um, Coach Styles just had an all track Zoom meeting and it was just like people sharing what they're going through at the time. Like there was no sort of agenda, there was no format, there were no bullet points that needed to be hit. Um, it was just people sharing what I'm going through. Um, how I can be helped um, and things like that. But yeah, like there, there will never not be conversations that need to be had. I can't imagine that happening. I can jump in here. I feel like with, um, as culture change, uh, changes as society changes, there is always gonna have to be some type of conversation that needs to be had, whether it's um, about race, or equality um, in those terms, there's always going to be some type of conversation that should be had between your team to help build that camaraderie and understanding and um, give others the opportunity to learn from each other. Um, I agree there will always be conversations that need to be had, but I think back to when I was, like the summer before I came here, my coach was like, had us, well, really Cam Mack was kind of running the show on it, but we all, we had like a team-wide Zoom, like in light of summer of 2020 and different events that took place over that summer, but we all were like told to watch, we watched the documentary 13th on Netflix, and then we had a team zoom and we just like there were a set of questions but we also sort of talked about it and it wasn't that wasn't even like the thing where black members of the team were like explaining or teaching it was just like discussing it and just having like set opportunities like that sort of dive into it's like hardships but also just even like great parts about like black experience in america and in the world 
So like really setting a time aside to have those conversations, I think is important. Okay, I think we're gonna end it for tonight, but this was really great. Thank you so much for joining us. And yes, let's give our panels a hand. If you would like a t-shirt, there's t-shirts up here. We have a lot of them. Um, as they say, Bears United. So let's be united on our pursuit of inclusion. But thank you for coming. And walk safe. <laughs>